working on our goal framework. Uh, thank you for who are starting the recording. Uh, uh, but we'll be really focusing on our goal framework and really what was released in our San Diego release. And so if you've not had the opportunity to download the San Diego release and get that update, so you can uh, check out some of the features and functionality, please take time to do that. Uh, just as a quick uh, uh, opportunity, if there is some questions or something that, that we talk about today, that's like, I would like a little more detail. You could, of course, use the Q&A at the bottom of your screen there, ask a question, and we'll be monitoring that throughout the, uh, the entire series. Uh, we're trying to get through this so that we, if you do have some Q&A at the end, we can even take some, some of those questions toward the end. So let's, let's dive into this. Uh, first of all, as we do for any webinar, uh, we do introduce our safe harbor, which there could be some forward-looking statements. We're not really talking a lot about our future, but more of what's already been released, but we do show this on all of our webinars. So uh, Lawrence Peter said this. He said, if you don't know where you're going, you probably will end up somewhere else. And we've heard this statement before, but we know that really successful organizations, they have a clear vision and they know where you're going. And more than likely, your organization is no different as you want to have that clear vision and know where you're going. And that's why we believe it's imperative that we are aligned to some level of growth framework. So why does that, why does a goal framework actually matter? And I think most of us understand setting goals, but what we found in a research done by McKinsey and Gallup was that lack of clarity leads to this 78% of employees feel that, feel that leaders have, have a clear, do not have a clear direction for the organization. I mean, what a detriment to the organization to not have lack or not have clarity. Or there could be that lack of transparency where 87% of US employees feel that their organization leadership does not provide that transparent communication. And without communication that's transparent, it's hard to keep your organization aligned. And last is kind of the lack of strategy where we find that 90% of those same resources are allocated to the same place every year over year. And not that you can't, the same employees can't work on the same work, but should they be? And should you have a strategy and focus based on that? And that's really where the goal framework comes in place with these three. The problem that you get with goal framework, and most of y'all can probably attest to this, is it kind of gets a little messy. I mean, all of these different, you know, what's a framework? What's a strategy? What's an approach? I mean, all of these different words that come into play, and it's kind of jumbled up a bit. So to help set the tone a little bit in this webinar, I'm gonna bring some clarity to you of what that goal framework is. And when we do the demonstration that uh, Alex is gonna do here in a couple minutes, it'll probably make sense to you how we've designed and organized our new goal framework. So if I were to take that and structure these into three buckets, and I'll break these down in the next two slides here and really spend a little more time in talking about these. But so the first bucket is the framework itself. And really the framework starts off with what is it or how am I going to capture my goals? You know, what is it? What is a goal and how am I going to begin to capture it? it and some of you may remember, depending on who's the audience, is that it, early in the 60s, uh, it started off with this MBO, managed by objective. Throughout time, it even moved into some level of, as you can see, whether it's BHAG or these outcome driven metrics. In today's more modern approach, OKRs have been objective key results have been that predominant way of measuring uh, or assigning goals. And this was first really int introduced uh, by Google, John, John Dover from Google really introduced this OKR model. So as you move across here, not only do you have goals in a framework, but how do I create those goals? And most of us probably have heard SMART, right? Uh, and what that acronym SMART is. And I'm gonna break these down in just a minute. So I won't walk through the acronyms here, but uh, how do I begin to establish a goal? And what's the best way to write that goal? And that's where these guidelines really come into place are really effective in helping you write those goals. And there's these other ones. And I'll put these in other buckets because they could be different things. Uh, for instance, a lot of organizations say, oh yeah, we do KPIs. Well, is KPI the same as a framework? And I will kind of show you the differences between KPI and potentially an OKR, because there are some 
definitely subtle differences that create some level of changes of how I establish the goals through the organization. So let's look at specifically our goal framework. And we're just gonna look at these three and kind of see what the difference is between these types of, of frameworks. Now, as I mentioned before, the OKR, and what we find is this is a very modern approach of creating goals. It really kind of defines much like the other goals is the what. But in addition to the what, it actually helps define how am I going to do this and then when or how often am I going to establish this particular goal. It also allows us to, to be more, let's just say, more strategic, maybe a little bit more uh, ambitious with that goal. So it doesn't have to be as con constrained as potentially some other goals that, that your goal frameworks you can use. Or we could use a traditional approach like an MBO which an MBO is really from a key, key change between the two, it really focuses on the what, right? So it may not define necessarily the how or often or, or when I necessarily gonna obtain that goal, but it really does define the what. And it normally is tied to some level of compensation, more risk adverse, where the difference between both of those above, a KPI is more of the, what am I gonna do? And then when am I gonna do it? And it's a very variable, as we know that you can establish a KPI on a weekly basis, a monthly, a quarterly, you know, it doesn't matter. And it's usually react, right? It's usually not one of those goals that I measure before. It's usually how am I obtaining that? You know, so it's that benchmark, that measuring stick that's saying, oh, did I accomplish what I said I was going to do? So more of that quantitative measurement of how I'm achieving that particular goal that could be set. So these are the three things, three items that we really want to focus on the goal framework, uh, the difference between this, and there are others, but I wanted to really establish the, the key difference between those three items. Now, how do I write those goals? And what I find beneficial with writing or setting some level of guidelines and goals is that if you have a natural approach to writing your goals, normally your goals are created with a little more intentionality versus stating, hey, we'd like to do X, you're being a little more specifically, whether it's using SMART, and we're familiar with this, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, or time-bound. Um, people are used to use that where a more modern approach is using the acronym FAST, which is frequent. Goals should be frequently discussed or ambitious. Goals should be ambitious or specific where I can be some level of specificity as I measure that particular goal or transparency, which I find organizations that provide these, really these four things, especially with this frequency and transparency is it keeps the organization aligned. It keeps the organization on that same path. And there's another option around facts. And these are really, how do I write those goals and how are those goals visually managed throughout the organization? So these will be referred to as gold guidelines. Now, where we feel like ServiceNow really helps you in this, and this is where uh, we're going to turn over here to, to uh, Eric in just a second, is or Alex here in just a second, is what, how can ServiceNow really help you with this? One is, is ServiceNow really is that single source of truth of goals throughout your entire organization. And what I mean by that, whether I'm talking at a strategy level, could be an executive level, planning level, or organizational breakout of those goals. And we'll demonstrate that with you. It's that single source of truth of setting those goals and measuring those goals. Or how does, the other one is, is how do we support those goals to align to your business? So not only do we align to your organizational strategy, but if you're separated by portfolio or product or business unit, we allow you to sign those goals. And of course, those targets align to those goals, depending on how you align your business. And the third way that we feel that ServiceNow really helps with this is that we link your strategy to execution. So it's one thing to set a goal at that top level, right? We get it. I'm going to create a goal for our organization, whether it's an EBC or some of that type of high level executive uh, type goal, or I'm trying to do my business unit. How do I begin to look at the work that is actually aligned to that goal and how am I tracking to that goal? And all three of these, we're going to demonstrate to you of how ServiceNow really can help you with your setting your goals and uh, aligning that strategy, your line of work to those goals. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. I'm gonna turn it over 
to Alex, and he's going to do a quick demonstration of how ServiceNow can help you with your goals. Turn it over to you, Alex. Thank you, Thomas. Um, hi, everyone. Let me just uh, open up my my camera for a while so you can uh, see that I do exist. <laughs> I'm not just, just a voice. Um, Okay, seems I'm having issues with my camera, but that's okay. Uh, nice talking to you all. Um, we'll start by uh, uh, commenting that this presentation really resonated with me because I've been through all of those uh, frameworks in the past. And uh, for me, strategies don't come to life just by being on a beautifully crafted strategic map that you publish on the internet or you hang on the wall of the CEO's office or you print on the company's wallpaper. Um, strategies come to life when they are in use, guiding people on their day-to-day -day activities, helping, they, helping them make better decisions and focus on the right things that will deliver the business outcomes we need. So let's move on to the platform now. Uh, where we'll be able to see how ServiceNow, a strategic portfolio management, enables you to align all of those levels of the organization towards the delivery of the business outcomes. So I believe you can uh, already see uh, my web browser here where I have ServiceNow open. And uh, this is the Alignment Planner workspace. The We, we normally call it APW, but the Alignment Planner workspace is designed to be like a single planning console to help you plan and monitor the delivery of those business outcomes you desire at all levels of your organization. What is really, really interesting in, in the way this was built is that you can model this in the best way for your specific requirements. So you can either plan by a portfolio, by business unit, by product line or division, or a combination of those. And how do we start with that? Well, first we're gonna start at the enterprise level. So here I have the goals that have been set at the enterprise level for my company, Acme Inc. And uh, let me just open up the, the, the whole plan for you to see. And here I can see that I have goals and various uh, levels. I have uh, goals and sub goals, and I have targets set for those goals. So uh, if you run a parallel with the uh, OKRs, for instance, we're talking that uh, maybe this is an objective and this is a key result, for instance. Uh, or if you're talking MBO, you, you may have an MBO. The goal is here and your uh, KPI that measures your uh, delivery is here. So we use those um, generic names because we wanna make sure that people see themselves in the application and they understand that uh, we are not fixated on one specific uh, goal framework. We are uh, trying to help you, uh, whatever framework you use in your organization, you can uh, see yourself in this application and actually put it to good use and uh, make your strategy come to life. So this is ACME's uh, enterprise goals and targets. So we're talking about having uh, happy employees, inspire customers, and be the leader in our industry. Those are our goals. So the next step would be to... Um, drill down into what an organization within ACME would do to create their own goals and set their targets. So I'm going to drill down here to the portfolio level and I'm going to drill into the HR um, portfolio goals. Okay, so first I'm on the second level of my uh, strategic plan. So I am now the the person in charge of planning uh, HR goals, I can see my company's goals up here. And from them, I can uh, easily um, take a look at what 
happy employees mean uh, by jumping into that uh, specific corporate goal, or I can even create a sub goal related to that enterprise level goal. Now, you can see here that I already have in my plan four goals. Some of those uh, may be um, tied to the enterprise level goals and someday uh, some of them may be standalone goals. Let, let me take a look at this. Here I can personalize my view. I'm gonna bring parent go up here. Um, oh, there you go. So here is parent go. And you can see that these two goals here, they are linked to the enterprise level goal of happy employees. But I still have two goals here that are standalone goals for the HR department that also need to be uh, uh, taken into account, right? Uh, underneath those goals, you can set targets. So to improve employee satisfaction, I will, how do I measure that? How do I know that I'm getting there? And I have two targets here, two indicators that will help me assess uh, the employee satisfaction, which is uh, two um, scores, the employee engagement score and the employee satisfaction score. And here I can see uh, we have a base value where we, get, we, we start uh, on that value. We have a target value. So here I'm starting at 92% engagement and I want to reach 100%. So far I haven't measured any results. So I didn't accomplish anything for this, this target. Uh, on the other hand, for employee satisfaction, I started on 60, I want to reach 65, and I'm currently at 62, thus making me at 40% of my target. So this is all of the things that we are able to uh, monitor in terms of goals and targets. Now, how do we um, achieve those, those targets and deliver those business outcomes? Well, we first establish a, um, a framework of demand management and uh, innovation and we capture ideas. And obviously we're gonna have a backlog of initiatives that we feel are the, the, better, the best initiatives uh, for us to deliver the results. And thus we form our backlog. And here's the HR backlog. So, so these are all uh, different types of work uh, we have epics for development, we have projects, we have demands, and all of that, it's in the big list uh, related to the HR uh, portfolio. Now, what we can do here, let me see, we can uh, bring primary goal here, and I can see all the initiatives that don't have any, um, any primary goal defined. I can see the initiatives that have been linked to improve employee satisfaction, for instance. But let me do this. Let me put planning item type up here as well. So I can see improved employee satisfaction. I have seven demands, eight epics, and two projects. So this is how I can organize my, uh, my portfolio. This is how I can uh, prioritize, I'm going to start prioritizing my backlog. And in the end, I will have a list of prioritized. Let us do a little bit different. Let's see what I have here in status. I have now 33 uh, prioritized um, um, initiatives here. Those initiatives now, obviously, uh, we have uh, initiatives that are, are still in the demand phase, we're still assessing them. We have projects that are going on. We have epics that are being delivered as, as part of an agile development um, initiative. Um, but we need to put those on time, in time. And that, that's where the roadmap comes in. So here I can create for a specific planning period, I can create my roadmap. I have all of my initiatives here, all of those initiatives that have been prioritized. And uh, just let me just uh, groom a little bit this view for you to uh, see how interesting this is. I'm going to group everything by um, primary goal. I'm going to color by planning item type so I can see what's agile, what's traditional, what's still in the demand phase. I want to show the owner. And I want to see planet cost. 
and planet plan benefit on the bars and I want to see the dependencies. Okay, I think that's good enough. Uh, so here are all of the initiatives that we have. Uh, you can see we we have both epics which are in um, yellow, uh, epics that are being delivered in an agile way. We have um, projects that are being delivered in the traditional way, and we have also some demands here that are still in planning phase. We're still uh, starting to qualify and, uh, and, and decide what to do with, this, uh, with those uh, demands. So you can even see that they, don't, uh, they, they have no link to any, any primary goals here. So pretty much this is uh, what we have at this time on the goals framework. We start by defining an enterprise level uh, goal um, set of goals and targets. We drill down into the uh, next level of portfolio uh, and define the goals and targets for that portfolio. We then uh, prioritize a backlog and we schedule that backlog in time using the roadmap. So everything here is tied to work. So I can, uh, this is the top down planning. I can do the bottom up. Uh, as well, and I can use the track mode to actually see what is being delivered. So planning is intimately connected with delivery, with execution. Uh, and you can see all that's going on and all of the initiatives that have a yellow status or a red status and, and dependencies that have uh, issues or not, uh, all from the same planning console. So. Let me go back to the uh, to the slides now. And just as a quick recap, we just saw that ServiceNow uh, SPM enables you to communicate your strategies, goals, and targets with transparency, enabling strategic alignment in all levels of your organization and clearly defining ownership and accountability. Now, uh, your goals or targets are no longer alone in the dark corner of your intranet. They are supported by the right people doing the right work to success successfully deliver the business outcomes you expect. Uh, we could also see how your initiatives can be time-bound using roadmaps. Results can be monitored against targets and revisited as much as required for continuous planning and quick response to market changes. And uh, just remember to celebrate the goals that you achieve. Uh, and also be specific. Um, everyone needs to understand what they need to do. Focus on the most important business issues and set three to five goals, not, not to overwhelm your teams and ensure focus on delivery or of the business outcomes. And, and be ambitious. Uh, and you may be surprised by the results. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll finish. and. Back to you, Thomas. Uh, great job, Alex. Definitely appreciate that demonstration and really, really level set in the value of uh, our goal framework in SPM. Uh, there has been a couple questions in our QA. Thank you for those questions. Uh, if you have any more, of course, you could uh, uh, type in in the Q&A. I know this was a, definitely a quick webinar on our goal framework. And uh, as you're typing those questions, uh, Alex, if you could go to that next slide, we do want to remind you of a couple of events that's coming up in the future. On the 28th, uh, we're going to really break down our application portfolio management. And if you've not had the opportunity to see this, uh, I would highly, highly uh, want you to invest in your time of understanding APM and the value that your organization get, can get from APM. And you can sign up for that webinar. And you, by the way, you'll you'll see these uh, uh, these slides. We'll make sure we get this this link to you so you can register and sign for these events as well. And then on August 25th, uh, back again uh, on our Thursday call, we're going to have Transforming with Agile at Scale. Uh, this is another great opportunity to kind of look at how ServiceNow is addressing kind of the Agile or Scaled Agile framework and a good opportunity to see how we're addressing that in our strategic portfolio management. So with that in mind, uh, if you have any questions, we got about uh, two, three minutes here. Feel free if you want to 
uh, raise your hand. I'd be more than glad to open up the room if you want to ask one audibly, or you can type it in the Q&A. I'll just pause for a minute just to see. All right, don't look like we have any coming in. Okay, uh, one question was, and I'll just read these audibly. Um, uh, what is available for Gold Framework on Rome? Uh, so in Rome, the goal framework table structure is completely available. So what Alex actually went through just a bit ago was uh, looking at our alignment plan or workspace, which, by the way, does require, as you know, the San Diego release. However, the, the, the list view in the forms to create those goals and even align those goals to work, you can do that in our goal framework table uh, view and form. So it is available in the Roam, um, and you can leverage that uh, in the Roam release. It just would not be in the alignment plan or workspace. But a uh, great, great question. And we'll just, we've got about one more minute. If you have a question, die to ask or type. Now is your time. All right. Well, I want to thank all of y'all for uh, your time um, today. Oh, we do have one more question. I'll answer this one before we end. Is as far as the setup, is there a plugin? Uh, so the goal framework is not a plugin in itself. Uh, it is part of the family release. And so it is part of the Rome uh, release, but it is also a part of our alignment plan of workspace, which, as you know, the alignment plan of workspace is a store release. And so it is if you are updating alignment plan of workspace, then you could most certainly you should update your alignment plan of workspace from the store release but it's not necessarily a plugin that you have to enable. Right, just great questions. Thank you all, thank you all for your time today. Uh, feel free to reach out to our contacts. Any other questions that we could not answer uh, for you today, we definitely uh, are here for to support and answer any questions for future. But if not, we look forward for you joining on our next uh, Thursday uh, webinar. Y'all have a fantastic rest of the day. Thank you for your time today. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Okay, I'm signing off and I will exit the webinar. Thanks everyone.